Tennessee's Partner is a short story published by American author Bret Hart, 1836-1902. Hart is best known for his short stories, though he also published well-received poetry. Tennessee's Partner first appeared in Overland Monthly in 1869. Its themes include friendship, loyalty, mortality, and the meaning of humor. Hart's stories about the mid-19th century California gold rush have inspired several movies. Set in 1854 at Sandy Bar, presumably Northern California, the unnamed narrator says that no one in the bar knows the true names of the two characters featured in the story he's about to tell. Presumably a man, the narrator speaks in second-person plural. Tennessee is the nickname for the fun-loving, capricious gambler. He may or may not be a thief too. His best friend is simply called Tennessee's partner. The partner is the exact opposite of Tennessee. For starters, he has zero sense of humor and wants to focus on building a slow, honest living through gold mining. He says that the partner picked up a wife in San Francisco. They quickly fell into a romance and married. After their lightning bolt wedding, Tennessee, who was his roommate, also fell in love with his partner's wife and elopes with her. They leave town, but Tennessee returns only a few months later, the wife has gone on with yet another bloke. To everyone's surprise, Tennessee's partner bears no ill will toward the man who ran away with his wife, and the two become fast friends once more. Tennessee tries to steal from a visiting stranger and the bar owners of the establishments become sick of his antics and report him. Before he's captured, Tennessee runs around the bar firing pistol shots into the roof. Only when the sheriff appears, a small man on a gray horse, does Tennessee surrender to the authorities. More because he respects the sheriff than because he feels remorse for stealing. The judge and jury that Tennessee finds himself before are determined to make an example of him, so they seek out the harshest punishment possible within the law. The partner goes to plead his case to the judge. He claims that he was just walking by and wanted to check in on the court proceedings. He admits that his friend is a criminal, but he still thinks he should be given another chance. The judge tells him to hurry up his story about his friendship with Tennessee, because he can see that the jury is starting to think fondly of the defendant. The partner goes so far as to offer a bribe to the judge. He drops $1,700 worth of gold on the courtroom floor. The judge refuses and lectures him on how the law is above money. The partner says he acted alone and his bribe shouldn't affect the sentencing on Tennessee. The judge uses the partner's appearance in court as a reason to bolster the sentencing against Tennessee. The man is now to be hung. The papers write articles warning would-be criminals to stop their evil or they'll end up like the accused. The partner cannot witness the murder himself, so he waits a good distance from the tree before approaching. After Tennessee is hung, the partner wheels a mule cart called Jenny, it's a familiar sight around town as he uses it for work. The partner says he doesn't want to rush anything. He took the day off and can wait as long as necessary before carting off the body. He does so by noon. The narrator leads a funeral march through Grizzly Canyon. The townspeople look on with a sense of curiosity, sympathy, or disdain. One man pretends he's playing the trombone in mock recognition of the deceased but he can't keep the charade up because the knowledge of the recently dead is too large to ignore. The partner makes a grave for Tennessee in the arid California landscape. He gives a speech about freedom, how Tennessee lived a life of freedom, and how he had to take care of his body as his best friend. Before he can cry, he says the fun's over and begins filling the grave all by himself, he refuses the help of anyone else. After everyone leaves, the partner sits on the grave, looking melancholy and thinking. The next day, everyone at Sandy Bar treats him kindly. They all notice that his health seems diminished. The next day, the partner's appearance is even worse. A season passes, and some grass begins to grow over Tennessee's grave. The partner has become gravely ill. One night, Tennessee's partner wakes up from a dream. He's been dreaming of ways to reach Tennessee. There's a terrible storm outside. He starts talking incoherently about seeing his friend again. A nurse keeps him from leaving his house and venturing out into the storm. But in his mind, the partner is already out in the storm. He's in the Ajini now. It's hinted that it's his turn to die and the partner is ready for it as he'll be reunited with his best friend. The last line of the story confirms that, in some sense, the two are reunited in death. I hope you enjoyed this video leave a like if you did and be sure to subscribe thank you.